Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk about, talk about all sorts of wonderful things, uh, including uh, the dry throats you may be feeling this morning, which include the fires that are happening up low, low. So I'll talk a little bit about that. I got a new dub and stuff. I got a couple guests from Missoula Agent Services, Adrian Hopkins and Carol Nisbet. And they're going to hear they're here to talk about senior core foster grandparent and volunteering with the Missoula Agent Services. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about weather. So if you guys are interested in going outside, you may want to check the uh, Missoula County Health um, Missoula County Health Department because the air quality is uh, it's it's unhealthy, but it's not unbearable as much as it could be tonight. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. But of course, it is currently 54 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 92. Your low is going to be 58 tonight. Um, if you're planning on keeping those windows open overnight, you may want to avoid that because there might be increased snow. I mean, not snow, but increased um, smoke um, in the air as well. So. Uh, pretty much this whole week, it's going to be highs into the 90s. Your lows are going to be into the 50s. Um, let's talk about some things that are happening in the news. So Lolo Peak area is on fire, if you haven't already noticed. Um, and the Missoula County Health Department has issued a moderate level of air quality, which for people in the Lolo Florence area will have unhealthy air quality as soon as tonight, but it will fluctuate. Smoke conditions can change rapidly and vary widely based on locations while f wi um, wind f um, Fire, fire flare-ups and proximity to fires. The department encourages individuals to use visibility as a guideline to help uh, gauge air quality at a given time and a place to take appropriate precautions. Unfortunately, um, there are no there are no new fires in the area to report on, and hopefully that this will remain unchanged throughout the week. Generally, expect hazy skies to continue and localized deteriorated air quality at communities direct downwind of the active air fires or at night. When the smoke flows down the valley into the populated areas, Rock Creek, Elberton, Frenchtown, Lolo, and Florence are likely to see fluctuating air quality with potentially unhealthy conditions. So this is from the Missoula County Health Department. You can always go to the Missoula County Health Department. You Google them, and you can go to the website and make sure you look up air quality. You can type in Missoula air quality, and it should just give you uh, options to these websites. But of course, also, um, MCAT did a um, thing at uh, um, Lolo Schools, so there were officials, um, the hotshot crews and stuff like that came down and they uh, talked about some of the, uh, what they're going to do with the Lolo fire, which is nothing. They're, I mean, one of the things uh, about the Lolo fire, what they're going to do is they're just going to see what happens and if it becomes, um, gets to the point where it gets uh, out of control, they will contain it if it gets too close to any towns. But for as of right now, they're not going to really do anything to the fire. So it's going to basically be on fire for the next two months before the season change will um, get rid of the fire. Um, so here's a little background. Um, just the last, like, probably like four or five years ago is probably the first time I ever saw Lolo Peak without snow. Um, so we'll see uh, how that works out. Um, usually, uh, Lolo Peak is, has usually snow year round, and um, as of five years ago, there was not much snow. Of course, in the state, um, if you ha uh, in the state, you can expect more than 20 government jobs to be cut pretty soon. With a two-year budget decided by the Republican majority in the state level being 75 million dollars short of what Governor Steve Bullock would have hoped for, and it is clear that all money-saving efforts will be to form in the form of budget cuts. Um, Steve Bullock wanted to. Uh, have a rainy day fund, but um, it was approved. But unfortunately, there wasn't enough to revenue to actually build a rainy day fund for it to be qualified as a generally decent rainy day fund for this kind of situation. So what they're doing is they're doing um, tuck, um, cuts and stuff like that. So I got this information from the Missoulian, and uh, there's a lot of more details on in that in Missoulian, so you can look that up. And, and an expected $30 million will be taken from the state fire fund out of a roughly $65 million that are in the reserve, even as Bullock over the weekend issued an executive order declaring a fire emergency. 2013, the cost of, of fighting fires exceeded $71 million. Other years like 2015 have become more mild with costs of $7.4 million. On average year, it runs about $22 million. The DNRC has spent $18.8 .8 million on firefighting so far this year. The article in the Missoulian goes into more details about some of the uh, government uh, jobs that are going to be cut. So you can look that up by going to the Missoulian.com. 
In national news, President Donald Trump announced Wednesday, so th just earlier, um, that he plans to reinstate a ban on transgender individuals from serving in any capacity in the U.S. Armed Forces. The decision reversed a policy initially approved by the Defense Department under Barack Obama, President Barack Obama, which was still under final review, that would allow transgender individuals to openly serve in military. Defense Secretary James Mattis uh, announced last month that he would be delaying the enactment of this plan to begin allowing transgender individuals into the military. And this is what uh, Donald Trump tweeted. After, consult col um, after consultation um, with my generals and military experts, please be advised that the United States government will no longer accept or allow transgender individuals to serve in any capacity in the U.S. military. Trump said in a series of tweets Wednesday morning, uh, many folks who are transgender uh, have been have better access to healthcare through military services, which why some costs for military benefits would go up to cover folks who are transgender. Um, Trump's decision marks a setback for LGBT right groups who have expressed concern that the Trump administration could chip away at progress that the community has sen seen in recent years on the backs of of a series of landmark decisions in recent years that have been included in legalization, legalization of same-sex marriage nationwide, nationwide and a repeal of the ban on gay people openly serving in the military. And this is an article that I get from CNN. So that's kind of what's happening in the news. I got, uh, an, an, a brand, I got a new art clip for you guys. This is uh, from Chris Pepin, and this is uh, Ghost Images at the Missouri Art Museum. And when we come back, we'll have um, some people from the Missoula Agent Services talking about Senior Corps. Hey guys, we're back here with um, Adrian Hopkins and um, sorry, uh, Carol Nisbet, and you guys are here with the Missoula Aging Services, and you guys are here to talk about Senior Corps yes. and uh, uh, foster grandparenting, and volunteering in general when it comes to looking for seniors to be interested in that. Yes, we are. Yeah. We're so pleased to be here today. <laughs> Thanks for having us on. So, what can you tell us about uh, what it takes to be a volunteer? Well, goodness, uh, one of our <laughs> volunteers says it just takes love. Um, but for senior corps specifically at Missoula Aging Services, you have to be over the age of 55. Um, and depending on the program, we have different requirements. Um, we have three different programs within senior core. Our SVP program, uh, you have to be 55, but it's the most flexible program. It has hundreds of different opportunities. You can uh, volunteer for a one-time event like Project Homeless Connect or a Red Cross Blood Drive, or you could volunteer three times a week with uh, one of our community partners like the Pavarello, the Missoula Art Museum, hmm. just as examples. Um, our other two programs are stipend programs, uh, the Foster Grandparent Program and the Senior Companion Program. Those have a 15 hour per week uh, minimum service requirement and volunteers have to be income eligible. And um, we provide a stipend, mileage reimbursement, training, and uh, excess insurance. 
So the senior companions, they provide companionship to older adults or adults with disabilities. And foster grandparents, they provide uh, mentorship in classrooms to at-risk students in reading and or math. And Carol yeah. has been a senior companion and a foster grandparent and is on our outreach task force. <laughs> Carol is amazing. <laughs> So, uh, Carol, what can you tell us about uh, some of your experiences with the Foster Grandparent Program? Well, just um, helping the children at school, it is such a joy. I look forward every morning that I get to go. And um, the challenges that they meet, and when they have an experience where they've met, met and bettered their challenges, to um, see their reaction to like when the light kind of the light bulb goes off right. and they you know they they get like their math or their increased ability in their read in reading it's no. just and um it's 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 quite an interesting thing too because um a lot of times uh people that do this program are, are necessarily like sometimes they're like, sometimes grandparents and their children they move far away from their grandparents and a lot of times you know their grandparents probably see their kids maybe like once every like once a year on like an annual visit kind of thing mm -hmm. so um a lot of these programs also allows a lot of um elderly folk people in their golden years of their <laughs> life uh, a chance to actually connect with the younger generation and, they, and the ch children look forward to it and and it's it is it's it's a complement to the school activities mm -hmm. and so uh, what can you tell about what it what is it um, uh, so where can people find more information about this well, hopefully someone will see this program and say, hey, that's for me. If they're interested in more information or applying, they can call a volunteer coordinator at Missoula Aging Services, such as myself, at 728-7682, or they can go online to our webpage there at www.missoulaagingservices.org where our mission is to promote the independence, health, and dignity of older adults and those who care for them. Cool. Is there anything else you guys would want to uh, say before we wrap up? Anything I, that I missed? <laughs> I would like to uh, talk to your viewers cool. about our two really most urgent volunteer needs. Um, senior companions, we have a urgent need for male senior companions right. because we have a long waiting list of male clients who would just like some male companionship, you know? A guy to hang out with, uh, guy talk, sports, hunting, yeah. fishing, go grab some lunch, go for a drive. And <clears throat> in the foster grandparent program, we have a need for more volunteers in the outlying elementary schools like Target Range, French Town, Chief Charlotte, and Dismet, where Carol works. We just need more people to help the students there who need a bit more time and attention. Yep. And I really love um, Missouri Missoula Asian Service in general because it's not just about helping the uh, older population, but it also allows the older population to help themselves along the way. Excellent point. Yes. And I think you, you reap more benefits than you give. <laughs> nice. All right, um, is there anything else you want to say? Any final party notes? Just just that it's a joy and that I have so enjoyed it and would urge anybody that needs an excuse to get up in the morning or has, I mean, you could do three hours, five days a week or, you know, just adjust your schedule around um, the opportunity. It is such a joy to be involved with the children and it lifts your spirits. So one more time, where can people find more information? They can call 728-7682 or go online to www.missoulaagingservices.org. All right, thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks so Thank much for having, for having us. us. We'll be right back right after this. Is they may be able to function for a while, but they can't necessarily function for an extended period of time. So going back to school, they may be okay for an hour, hour and a half, but they may function just like their old self, but it doesn't mean they're gonna be able to sustain that for very long. So 
you can see all of these crazy things that are happening at a metabolic level and that's all that you need to remember. And it can take many days for everything to finally get back to where it's supposed to be. Now second impact syndrome, I want to give brief mention to this because this is what everybody freaks out about, okay? Second impact syndrome. I've been around this rodeo for 27 years, I've seen two cases of second impact syndrome. It doesn't happen very often, okay? It's just not clinically, I'm not going to say it's not a big deal because whenever there's a death it's a big deal, but it's not a big deal in the sense that we could screen people, we could do whatever we would like, and in reality as Ed said in East Montana, we ain't ever going to stop that from occurring because it's such a low base rate. These economic hardships just co compound existing inequalities. And the thing about drought is that I don't think people recognize is that a drought, you know, even when it rains again, what happened in the drought isn't immediately erased. When a drought happens, people go into debt, you know, to tide themselves over. Um, you know, the they don't just bounce back the next year when it rains, and they don't just bounce back if they've had to go off and, uh, to a slum area to, to get some work. As of right now, there are no, um, there's no cutoff number for each ranking category because we haven't received the form back, forms back and we haven't scored them. Um, so we're still deliberating on that, but the reason we move to ranking categories is so that they don't have to have 20% of all of our programs or units in them. Uh, th thanks for that. And the other question I have has to do with um, after APAS has prepared its recommendations, they go to the cabinet, is my understanding, uh, for some kind of decision based on some kind of priorities set by the president. Um, what assurances have you made that the recommendations and the rankings that you put forward are actually in any way implemented? Um, and what should we as the university be re requesting from our president if, if that's what needs to happen? Uh, throughout this process, uh, it, at the cabinet and presidential level, we will be using the same parameters, same consideration of criteria, metrics, and all of that, so that decisions may follow that track. Obviously, the president has uh, the authority to uh, make different uh, decisions based on uh, her feedback and analysis with the cabinet, uh, but the expectation is that it will follow through with the same pattern of analysis used uh, throughout this process. Hey, those are all the new programs that are on MCAT. Let's talk about some things that are happening at MCAT. This week, MCAT is wide open for anybody who wants to come down and be a part of our growing video making community. If you're interested in making videos or being a part of the video making process, MCAT is f the right place for you. And yes, this is kind of like a commercial, but it's usually like, it's like we're basically giving you the opportunity to do whatever you want with video and vi videography. So we host um, all sorts of wonderful uh, programs here at MCAT and one of the programs is our zombie camp. Next week uh, we'll be hosting a bunch of teens uh, between the ages of 14 and 18 roughly very roughly um, <laughs> and they're going to be making a zombie movie so the whole idea is that a collection of kids come together and they put all their talents and all their abilities together they pick up new abilities along the way and they create a wonderful short um, featurette and, and the, of course the theme is zombie movie so we're always looking for any interested bodies to be zombies so if you're a person out there who is interested in being a zombie being an extra in this movie we are looking for only zombies um, it's going to be on Tuesday August 1st which is next Tuesday um, and it's happening from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. be here at 10 a.m. so you can get all made up and stuff like that but of course, if you show up like at 11 a.m., we do some base, uh, basic makeup on you. But any kind of extensive makeup that will be done will be done at 10 a.m. So that's the plan for that. That will be our, our big zombie day. Will be It's on our Facebook page. Missoula Community Media Resource is where you can find out more information about the event and more. So um, if you want more information about MCAT in general, you can go to MCAT.org. It's a great website. It's a great resource where you can watch anything from MCAT at any time, including those programs that I just teased um, through our media assistant grants. If you're a local organization looking to uh, basically get your voice out there in a visual medium, MCAT is the place for you. The only stipulation is that you must be a nonprofit civic organization. Um, you must not be uh, basically selling so things basically you can't really sell anything but you can sell yourself it's just basically we're here 
we support the community, those kind of videos. You can't just be like, oh, here is uh, blah, 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 uh, buy your Toyota or whatever. <laughs> but anyways, um, more and more information, you go to MCAT.org or you can call us 542-6228. I have a brand new PSA. Actually, it's more like a commercial. I know like I'm just saying it's no commercial, but it's basically about our Saturday drop-ins, and I just made this the other day. So uh, this is kind of like to highlight um, our Saturday drop-ins, which are going to be returning in September after summer. But before you know it, summer is pretty much almost over. This is basically the last full week in July. Next week, Wake Up Missoula won't be airing because I'll be putting all my energy and concentration to the zombie camp. So um, here is a nice little tease for our Saturday drop-ins. And when we come back, we'll talk about some city council. And they were talking about the budget and how people in the Missoula uh, community were very frustrated with the city of Missoula with uh, higher uh, taxes. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back after this PSA. Summer is almost over and MCAT Saturday drop-ins are starting up again. Join a team of highly skilled local media artists as they get your kids experience in stop motion, source filmmaker, live action, and much, much more. Every Saturday starting in September from 1 to 5 p.m. for only $10 per kid, your kid can create short films and be a part of a growing youth film community. For more information, you can call us at 542-6228 or you can go online at MCAT.org. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council. So um, one thing you should, uh, just uh, here's a little bit of background. Um, the preliminary fiscal year 2018 budget was presented to the city council in a budget committee of the whole on May 24th, 2017. So from there, they were working on it tirelessly week by week. Then make sure the administration's goal is to to be adopt a budget in June. Um, once the uh, certified taxable value number are received by the city in late July or August, the city administration will develop a tax resolution to be adopted. They will provide a an estimate for taxes to be levied when the budget is presented. So here is Patrick Weezahead. He's a former Ward 4 member, and he's a homeowner who talks about the folks who live off of retirement and Social Security. So this is from their perspective of people who live on a fixed income. Any increase in Social Security benefits received by recipients. The Bureau of Labor Stats report that seniors spend twice as much as urban wage earners as a percentage of their total expenditures on Medicare, medical care, and on housing. Although true reports will not be released until this coming October, it has been reported that Social Security recipients may receive a 2.2% increase in January 2018. You're at three minutes, Mr. Weaselhead. However, inflation is currently at this. Let me remind the city that they are talking about fiscal stewardship and that we will live within our means. I want to be heard on this budget because I hear that we don't hear a lot of people. And I, I shall be use the proposed increases and have to adjust my budget and reduce my expenditures in transportation, food, housing, utilities, and etc. As such, I suggest the following so that I feel actively involved in the budget. Have every city department come back with three budgets reflecting a 1% reduction, a 3% reduction, and a 5% reduction, and look at where they might cut to bring budget back into a realistic, realistic option for all. Review any comparable city our size and see if they initiate a city tax to generate funds to reduce the burden on Missoula homeowners and initiate a voting measure to reflect that option. Doing this will mean fiscal stewardship and to live within our means. Thank you. All right, so that was Patrick Weaselhead. Um, stating his concerns about the uh, increase of tax uh, property taxes uh, based on the new uh, fiscal year of the budget. Here's Vicki Watson. She's the University of Montana um, resident um, in the area, the University District resident. Sorry about that. She talks to us about the increase in tax rates via university homeowner. And it was quite a shock when I opened up a letter from Montana DOR recently and informed me that my property appraisal had increased by 24%. Um, In the 34 years I've been here, property taxes have kept going up, as the previous gentleman just said, and at a much faster rate than my income has, by the way. But there's never been a jump this big before. And with the proposed 4% increase in the tax rate, I guess I'm looking at something like a somewhere between a 25 and 30 percent increase in um, in my property taxes, just as I am preparing to retire and go on a lower and fixed income. I'm estimating that my property tax will be about eight percent of my gross retirement income, and, and 
at a much higher percentage of my disposable income after I pay other taxes and essential as like rising health insurance costs and things of that sort. So I started re researching to see if Montana has any property tax assistance for retirees and found that there's a couple of low income programs, but my income is too high to qualify for those. Montana doesn't have a circuit breaker program, as it's called, that limits your property tax to a, to a percentage of your income, as many other states do. Uh, many other states also uh, freeze um, retirees' property taxes until their home actually sells, and then they, they go back and recoup some uh, taxes from the home sale. In fact, I was really shocked to see that Texas, a state whose motto is, if you don't have an oil well, get one, um, actually has more protections for elderly homeowners than Montana does. And I checked with an authority on the subject, State Senator Dick Barrett, a retired economics professor, and he confirmed that Montana has one of the most regressive property tax policies in the U.S. and Missoula has the highest property taxes in the state. Together, that is a very powerful formula for gentrification and taxing grandma out of her home. All right, so that was, um, once again, Vicki Watson talking about uh, some of her concerns about increased tax um, for property tax. Many of the future growth in Missoula is working towards, uh, is contributed to many factors. Um, many of the taxes that uh, are being paid, I'm just giving a little bit of background. Um, the the, the, um, the bond that was passed for the Missoula County Public Schools were passed, and, but this is uh, affects the whole county. Um, this is, uh, it was $158 million. And then, um, of course, the Fort Missoula Regional Park, which was passed uh, a couple years ago, $42 million, which uh, was, was a nice round number of $200 million in bonds that were passed uh, by Missoulians, no less. Um, anyways, the other part was that the water combination of Mountain Water Company, many of the uh, people came up there and just like, oh, we probably, with all this new taxes and all this stuff, m maybe we shouldn't have bought that water company. And of course, Missoula's uh, now Missoula Water Company, which has now gotten ownership of it. There's about $90 million, um, not just for paying for the water company, but also paying for um, the lawyer fees and all that stuff. That's uh, that's roughly the number. I like just to go with the nearest round number is $90 million for legal and buying uh, the place in the end. So anyways, lots of factors play a part in this, and it's not only just because property taxes are going up to uh, help compensate all this other stuff uh, along the way, but there is a definitely separation between this and that. Um, that's just a little background on that. You know, There are many bonds that were also passed, which were also voted on, but, but, but most people don't know that the money that the city will retain from public ownership will also save the money, the city millions of dollars because they own the water company, and which also will start putting the city more in the green, which would alleviate a lot of the tax burden later on. But anyways, let's go back to the people's response to the fiscal year 2018 budget. Here is Jesse Ramo uh, Ramos. He's a he has a financial service background, and this is his response to the budget. Would be, what is the, and this has also been said quite a bit, but what is the cost of living adjustment? What has that been for Social Security last year? And the answer is 0.03%. You guys are looking for a 3.82% uh, increase in the budget. And where is that difference going to come from? Because the cost of living adjustment is not just meant to cover property taxes. It's meant to cover increases in health insurance, which I'm sure you all know is just astronomical across the board. And it's going up far more than the cost of living adjustment is accounting for. So that was one question that I had. Where is the difference going to come from? So just looking at this budget, if I was given a review to one of my clients and they asked me what I thought, I would ask one question to them. I would ask, why are you trying to buy a Lamborghini when you can't even pay the water bill? And I think that that case is made in this business because where, if you look around, there's a lot of economic growth going on in the city. There is the old sawmill district. There's a lot of stuff coming, uh, coming due. So where is all the tax revenue going? Is the tax base being, is the tax base being captured by the urban re renewal districts completely? 
And why doesn't the city decide to zero base budget some departments and just find out where some of the waste is going? If you zero base budgeted them, you'd be able to find out how efficiently they were running and then move on from there. All right. I so uh, that was um, – <clears throat> sorry about that. Um, I'm, I'm, I have the uh, the smokers cough right now because of all the smoke. Jesse Ramos, uh, once again. Um, of course, I looked this up. Zero, basically, zero base budgeting is something that takes a lot of time to do. Um, I every little item is taken into account literally and would potentially cost more than actually find out how much they're saving because there's all little bits and pieces going on here there's a lot of committees in place to that are working on this and here are some of the uh, actual the comments that were made in response to a lot of the public comments of people who are um, having issue with the tax increase and stuff like that so here is Marilyn Marler um, talking in response Voting on the budget tonight, which I hope people will vote on the budget, is um, is not the end. Um, what I, I will say that you know before this public hearing, I was thinking if we got more revenue from Helena, then oh great, we can plant 500 more street trees, or you know. Now I'm thinking like we should just like <laughs> leave it alone. People are a little frustrated, and I understand that. Um, I I'll stop on all that. I just want to end by saying that I think all my 11 colleagues up here for working on the budget. There were some extremely tense meetings because we all feel strongly about different things. I want to thank the staff, as always, for like every week, every day you're working on this. And um, that is all. All right, so that was um, Marilyn Marler. Up next, we got another quote from a uh, city council. This is Jordan Hess. He talks about the city saves money, uh, how the city saves money, and how they can pick, have to pick and choose what to keep and what to replace altogether in the end. And so when I hear that we need to find a middle-of-the-road approach or that um, – that something needs to give, I agree. And, and as as Ms. Jones said, I think that what needs to give is our, our conversation about our available revenue sources. Um, and because the request for services, important good services, don't quit coming in, and um, our ability to um, fulfill and provide those services uh, isn't um, isn't um, uh, growing either with our current revenue sources. So we set a lot of priorities throughout the year. Um, we prioritize programs. We set policies. Um, we review the effectiveness of programs. We um, find efficiencies. Um, I mean, we have. I, I when when that remark came up tonight about um, uh, government being inefficient, I, I there were a flash of dozens of, of presentations that we've had in, in our committees about, um, you know, whether it's the police department utilizing volunteers to tag abandoned vehicles or the transportation division utilizing volunteers to inventory sidewalk conditions or um, I remember when we first, when I first sat, when I was first seated on the council, we had a tour of, of city departments and one of those things was the vehicle maintenance division and we had some, some contraption that was like a gigantic industrial snowblower that was, I think, from the 60s. And it was still, I mean, our vehicle maintenance manager was keeping this thing running because a new one would be a million bucks or $500,000 or some, you know, some absurd amount of money. So I, um, it, it smarts a little when, when people don't recognize the, the, um, the, Efficiencies and the and the scrutiny um, that we uh, place on these programs. Um, All right, so that was Jordan Hess talking about some of uh, what people have been saying and how he's been reacting to, to some of the comments. But I'm going to end the uh, meeting with a quote from John Engen, who responds to a lot of people's frustrations and concerns about the budget. This process began for the people sitting around this table in April. The night we're adopting is the night we're hearing from folks, don't raise my taxes. This is a two-way street. We want you to engage, but you've got to engage with us, and you've got to engage at the right time. And you've got to be creative, and you've got to help us solve problems. This budget is about solving municipal problems. This budget is about taking care of people, about growing a greater community, and about making that collective investment in us. Fundamentally, this is about we. And I hear a lot of I tonight, I, I, I. This is about we. This is our opportunity to work together, to take care of one another, in, I believe, 
probably the most effective way possible and with the closest relationship possible to constituents. And the beauty of all of this, as Mr. Moore suggested, is that when my performance review comes up in November, I'll know pretty clearly whether my instincts, what I hear from my constituents, what I hear from staff, what I hear from this council, whether all of that information and the decisions I make are the right ones for this community. All right, so that was Mayor John Ingen talking about uh, his response to the budget. So, of course, the fis the 2018 fiscal year, 2018 fiscal year budget was approved by um, by vote by city council. Um, of course, if you want to watch the four-hour meeting, you can go on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a great resource for anybody interested in getting involved with um, the city of Missoula's meetings. So today, there's going to be a whole bunch of meetings in terms of the committee meetings. Um, so you guys can go up to your government. You can go right underneath the city council tab, right about here. I don't know if it's too small for you, but I can zoom in just a little bit. You go to Agenda Webcast Minutes right here. Click on it. It brings you to this page. You always got to wait a second because then it brings up a, hyper, a bunch of hyperlinks to a bunch of agenda items that are going to be coming up. So apparently for today, the first meeting they're going to have is in the afternoon public works from 110 to 115. It looks like they're going to keep it short because I guess since they passed the budget committee, the budget um, fiscal year 2018, they're probably going to have a shorter Wednesday. Public safety and health is going to go uh, from 120 to 140 and then so on and so forth. So you have all these community meetings happening from one to about 4 p.m. Committee of the Whole and all sorts of wonderful things that you guys can get in touch with. Uh, and if you're also interested in watching a four-hour meeting about this and that uh, from our city council from Monday. Um, so, yeah, you just have to look it up. Go onto the website, ci.missoula.mt.us, and it's a, it's a great way for you guys to get connected. So now I'm going to change the tone altogether, and we're going to kick it off with a little bit of dubbing stuff and this is from the 1976 movie The Boy in the Plastic Bubble starring yes you guessed it John Travolta now it's time for Susan to get hers huh bra, bra, bra. oh jeez is that a horse Oh, right! Woo -hoo. Don't trip, 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 don't trip. Don't trip, don't trip. Woo, wow, that was outstanding! Of course, my life. I'm an equestrian, after all. That was pretty thrilling, wasn't it? I was just laying here. And you were like, whoa, with the horse and the stuff. Um, if, and I was um, like, oh, um, man. Do you think you ever get a chance to ride a horse? Maybe if there was a sequel with the horse and the plastic uh, bubble. Uh, in the car, now! Oh, no, I have to go. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll be back soon. Who is it? Oh, it's just my acting coach. I'm trying to be a better actress. Ooh, it's not that hard to be an actor. Action, say a line. Don't worry. I'll never outshine you. Hey, does your plastic bubble taste like fruit leather? No. Have you ever tasted it before? Mm -hmm. I bet it tastes like strawberries. Mm -hmm. Come here. <laughs> wow, I almost kind of enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think I need to get tested. Well, now it's time for your favorite part of the show, events, where I talk about what's happening in and around Missoula, because <laughs> I'm sure you guys love to be read from what I read from the MissoulaEvents.net. So anyways, employee insist... Employment assistance programs at the job service Missoula Palmer Pathways. Uh, are you seeking employment but have a tough time landing that job? The job services Missoula Palmer's Pathway program can help. Their education pl uh, pays and subsidy subsidize employment programs to help you land that career job. You can give us give them a call at 329-1275. Again, that's 329-1275. You can stop by the office at 
2677 Palmer Street, Suite 222. And they open daily, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 5 p.m. And this will help people get a job. Um, Missoula Public Library is at Missoula's Out to Lunch. So if you guys are planning on doing some kind of out to lunch cool thing, they have a kids activity provided by Missoula Public Library. They'll probably have the nice little bookmobile or book bus as they, as, as I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it's called actually because I'm just like, uh, I'm, I'm thinking this off the top of my head right now. So Little Bits, um, Little Bits is happening at Spectrum Discovery Center. No, not the Rick and Morty one, but the Spectrum Discovery Center is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging egg exhibits and activities and you can join them at their new location a 12 tool street so starting at 11 they're talking about a little bits so if for anyone it's three dollars three dollars and fifty cents for anyone over four and over and if you're under three you get in free it's a great um, opportunity to get kids engaged with science salsa loca is going to be at out to lunch at karis park starting at 11 a.m um salsa loca is a band which basically if you salsa loca think about a uh, nice little uh um, Cuban mix, Latin dance style, Havana nights kind of thing. Um, so out to lunch is a great is a place where there's many 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 vendors where you can get some food, some cool drinks and stuff like that. The air quality is still good, just so you guys know, it's not awful. So it's still good enough to be out, and you can go check this out. Out to lunch, 11 to 2 p.m. Free music. You don't have to buy food. You can just hang out there and enjoy a nice little uh, day in the park. Um, Makers be upcycle water watercolor travel kit workshop. Whew, that's a mouthful. Missoula Public Library is doing a do-it-yourself um, painting travel kit that you can fit into your pocket. Any supplies are provided by registration is limited to six participants. You can bring your printed tickets to class. You can register online at tinyurl.com slash watercolor travel kit hack 072617. Uh, uh, and this happens from 12 to 2 p.m. at the Missoula Public Library. You can go to MissoulaPublicLibrary.org for more information. Family Friendly Celebration of Hmong Culture at Missoula Art Museum. The celebration of Missoula Hmong Culture coincides with the exhibit From Flower Cloth to Story Cloth, Hmong Textures and Mam Collection. Come tour the exhibit, listen to uh, songs, have dinner at local Hmong owned food trucks, and admire finely crafted Pajning, uh, Pajnab textile techniques. Uh, this event is free and open to the public, and you can join the Missoula Art Museum from 4 to 7 p.m. tonight. And auditions, her by uh, Taylor Mack, and it's her spelled H-I-R, but it's uh, it's basically they're doing auditions for a uh, a show, a play. Uh, it looks, yeah, it's a play, and it's about transgender. It's a transgender play, and it's about uh, so the whole idea is um, let's see. So they're looking for, you can try, uh, no, that's pretty much it. They're just looking for uh, Isaac Connor, a 20-something son, dishonorably discharged from the military. That's the character. They have Paige Connor, middle-aged mother, experiencing a midlife rebirth. Um, then you got Max Connor, a teen, transgender, transitioning female to male. Um, interested um, male, female, encouraged to audition. Um, they're not looking for a male or a female. They're looking for somebody who could play both. And it's the uh, and of course Arnold Con uh, Arnold Connor is a middle aged father recently suffered from a severe stroke. So those are kind of the available roles they're looking for. And if you're interested in doing that, you can go to Hillary C as in the ocean at gmail dot com. You can contact her at nine eight nine. 285-7445 and this is going to be auditioning on um, the on today and it's going to be at the Good Work Studio 127 North Higgins Suite 306 it's on the third floor and it's going to be it's going to be open auditions and it starts at 6 p.m. tonight I think that'll be pretty interesting and if you're an actor and you're interested in these kind of roles why not um, there's going to be a comedy stand-up open mic at the Badlander, um, 7 p.m. tonight. Come try your hand at some stand-up comedy or watch other people do their thing at the Badlander. It's free. There are drink specials, and it's followed by karaoke. What more could a person ask for, as it's written right there in front of me? Sign-ups are at 7 p.m., and the show starts at 7.30. Each community gets up to five minutes to perform. If you can't get there in time to sign up, you can text Sarah at four, uh, 508 254 Five three seven five to uh, snag a spot, and there are only fourteen spots. So get there early so you can see your cure your place. Comics between the ages of eighteen tw and twenty one are welcome, but have to leave as soon as the bar opens at nine p.m. So you don't have to be um, twenty one and up. This is an eighteen and up event, but it will end at nine p.m. for eighteen and up folks. 
which you will have to leave. So that's kind of what's happening there. The Missoula City Band is playing tonight. I'll be doing that, mm, just so you guys know. And um, they'll be playing all sorts of wonderful artists. And the guest artist today is Gary Herbick, who is the... Uh, "Quote unquote saxophone player for Lisa Sim Lisa Simpson in The Simpsons, so that's what he's famous, most famous for, and most known for. But he is a musician who works out of L.A. and he plays a lot of saxophone for a lot of shows and a lot of different things. So he's going to be at Bonner Park Band Shell." at 8 p.m., and it'll be great. We'll be playing all sorts of wonderful music for you guys. But if you guys are interested in doing some late-night music, karaoke is going to be at Eagles Lodge, Badlander, Sunrise Saloon, and VFW. So if you're if you're done with uh, listening to some of the city band, you guys can go on down to the bars and sing your to your heart's content. Um, once again, um, that's kind of like what's happening with your um, Wednesday events. But here are some of your Thursday events. Starting at 8 a.m., Missoula Fairgrounds is hosting a uh, rodeo royalty applications. Girls who are the age of 6 to 23 are encouraged to apply for the next royal rodeo royalty and represent the Western Montana Fair. Applications are due in three days. It's kind of like a Western Montana Fair beauty contest, which will be great. And you can call 721-FAIR for more information. Brain games are happening at Spectrum Discovery Center. Uh, Spectrum Discovery Center is a place where people can get involved with science. Uh, basic Basics of Resilience is happening at 11 a.m. tomorrow at the Learning Center at Red Willow. What is the thing? Um, what is this thing called resilience, and how can I build my resilience? If you are, if you've been asking yourself questions like this, you can join them for the free basic uh, basics of resilience workshop. Resilience is a quality that lives in each of us. It is our ability to fall down and get back up again, change course when we need to, and preserve when required. During this workshop, they will explore what makes us resilient and how we can build the basics on how each of us carries. And so this happens 11 to 1 p.m. at the Learning Center at Red Willow um, starting Thursday. Honeybees Grow Up is happening at the Missoula Insectarium at 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. It just takes 21 days for a European honeybee worker to grow up. This week, they will be taking a peek into the hive to see what's taking care of baby bee and how she grows. They will be uh, making a beautiful honeybee life cycle necklace to take home. Come by anytime between 3 and 5 p.m. Um, Tom Catmull, um, father of many of the Catmulls that uh, are always like to hang out at MCAT and one of them actually works here, um, Jack Catmull. His dad is going to be playing at Draft Works Brewing Company from 5 to 8 p.m. You can check it out. It's going to be wonderful. Shake Well at Downtown Tonight is going to be not tonight, but it's going to be tomorrow night at Downtown Tonight, which is what it's called. Don't be confused. Thursday night, 5.30 p.m., Shake Will is going to be performing at Care Spark. And they'll have all sorts of food vendors and uh, beer gardens for anybody who wants to enjoy some park outdoor activity. But be aware that um, the closer we get to night and the further, uh, the longer uh, the fire keeps going on, the, the air quality might be is an issue. So just be aware of that. You got Full Drawn Film Tour at the WOMA. You can join them for the FDFT7 by Full Drawn Mentor. F no, wait, Full Drawn, uh, Full Draw Film Tour. Oh, I, I don't know, I said men. <laughs> for the young and the old, it's bow hunting and adventure on the big screen. This is happening at the Wilma at 6 p.m. tomorrow. And this is uh, be prepared for something you can't watch at home, online, or on TV. They invite you to come and enjoy uh, bow hunting friends. Doors will open at 6 p.m. Enjoy cold beverages, um, all sorts of camaraderie with bow hunters. Um, the action pack show will roll off at 7 p.m. It's for all ages, and tickets are information at logjampresents.com. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. So, 7.30 p.m., it's a big thing that's happening at the um, MCT Center, Center for, for, for Performing Arts. Um, so, basically, for six weeks, a bunch of teens and young kids have been working on musical theater for six whole weeks, and they're going to have a Next Step Prep showcase at 7.30 p.m. at MCT. And so, um, on June 26th, um, 20, 32 teens from as far as Florida, Connecticut, and Germany began classes at MCT's Next Step Prep, daily practice in acting, dancing, and singing, along with workshops with Broadway professionals, have enhanced their artistry and confidence in the young performers. Many of the students are con considering pursuing a career in performing arts. This is the ninth summer that the MCT has offered the Next Step Prep program. So if you've been seeing a whole bunch of people wearing those uh, blue and gold kind of t-shirts, kind of looks like they're, oh, they, are they a baseball? team their next step prep theater group that they've been hanging out this is an hour-long performance and is free and open to the public happening tomorrow night 
at 7.30 p.m. I can't say enough about this. I know a couple of the kids that I've worked with in some of my other plays that I've worked with in the past, some of the teens are very talented, and you can expect more than what you can expect from these kind of shows. So here are some of your late night events that are happening. Um, let's see. <laughs> Plonk, live jazz, essential cinema. Nashville is going to be playing at the Roxy at 8 p.m. Shooter Jennings and Way More Outlaws with Billy Strings is going to be at Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be rock country music. Honeycomb is a DJ at Monk's tonight. Um, rock, no, not tonight. Tomorrow night. Rocking Karaoke at Dark Horse is going to be on Thursday night as well. And the last thing for your Thursday night is uh, uh, more karaoke at VFW. That basically concludes everything that you need to know about what's happening um, in and around Missoula in terms of events. Once again, I want to thank Adrienne Hopkins. She's the volunteer coordinator at the Missoula, Art, uh, Missoula Aging Services. They're looking for volunteers, particularly men in the elderly range of 55 and older who are looking to be foster grandparents, get involved with uh, senior companions, and all sorts of volunteer that the Missoula Asian Services provides. So another thing that will help entice people to do um, any kind of in, uh, uh, volunteering with Missoula Asian Services is that it's a great way people who have a fixed income to help alleviate some of the tax burden that they have to deal with um, this year. And I think a lot of the things in terms of budgets and a lot of the things that are happening in um, our local government is causing a lot of burdens on taxes. So one thing is to help alleviate and is to be active against it. And many ways of doing this is volunteering and working the, with uh, many programs such as the Missoula Asian Services, which will provide a uh, tax stipend for a lot of people who get involved with that. So it's a way for people to get out, get involved, and actually get more from these services than they can get out of it. And also, I want to thank Carol Nesbitt, uh, Nesbitt uh, for, uh, who is a volunteer who, ca who can say firsthand that is a great experience being in the Missoula Asian Services. So once again, I want to thank those guys for joining me. Uh, and if you want to find out more information, you can watch their interview anytime on my YouTube channel, wakeupmissoula.wixsite um, slash wakeupmissoula. So, so nice. We made you write it all twice. So here is my website. It's a great uh, resource for um, subscribing to me on YouTube, liking me on Facebook, and following me uh, at Twitter. All the keywords are Wake Up Missoula. If you're interested in finding everything you need to know about MCAT, Missoula's community media resource, you can log on to our Facebook. You can go to MCAT.org. You can follow us on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. Um, thanks for joining me, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. <laughs>